Okay, we're going to be doing two different things in this video. The first thing is to do a few word problems, finish up a little bit of uh, section 6.4. So this is a, just a snapshot of your textbook. It's section 6.4, page 399. Your assignment is to do 85 to 95 odd. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do one example from each type of question and then let you fill in the blanks for the rest. So make sure you complete the assignment. All right, let's start with 85. Here's what it's saying. Find the average rate of change, so I don't know if you remember or not, that just means slope, from 0 to pi over 2. So when they give me 0 to pi over 2, those are x values. So for 85, let's start our work down here. If f of x, the function I'm given, is sine x, they want me to find f of 0, f of pi over 2, and then they just want me to find the slope between those two points. Okay, so a little bit of new stuff, but really just pulling out some slope from before. So, sine 0. So think of your x, y, r stuff that we've talked about. Sine 0 would be 0. Sine pi over 2 would be 1. So think about these two values that I found as y coordinates, y1 and y2. And the two x values are x1, x2. So if I have to calculate slope, remember from algebra 1, this little equation here, all right? Then if I plug in my points, all right, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, what you'll notice is I get the value of 1 over pi over 2. And then always simplify these. When you're dividing by a fraction, really multiply by the reciprocal. So 1 over pi over 2 is the same as 2 over pi. So the average rate of change is 2 over pi, or the slope is 2 over pi. Okay, so that's number 85. You guys can try 87 on your own. All right. Now, let's take a look at the next chunk of questions. It says in problems 89 through 92, we're finding f of g of x and g of f of x. So now we're doing some composite functions. And then after we find the composite function, they're asking us to graph it. Okay, so this is pretty new here. All right, so let's kind of slide this up a little bit. I'm going to put 89. So again, I know you have your textbook, so let me just start 89 down here. And again, they're giving me two functions. They're giving me an f of x. All right, they're saying f of x is sine x. g of x is 4x. And they want me to compose. They want f of g of x. Then they want me to graph it. Okay, so f of g of x, that means I'm going to take this g function, plug it into f. So it would be sine of 4x. All right, that's the easy part. Plug it in. Now they want us to graph it. All right, so we have to use all of our new materials here. So the period's going to be 2 pi over 4, which is half of a pi. Okay, so if I start graphing it, the way we do that is we're going to take our axes here. If the period is pi over 2, I'm going to go way out here to pi over 2. Cut it in half, so I'm in halves, and I'm in quarters, then I'm in eighths, cutting everything in half. Then I go one eighth, two eighths, this would be three eighths, because remember everything is perfectly symmetrical. And this is a sine curve, so sine curves start at zero, zero, right? The amplitude of this guy would just be a one, because there's just a one in front of there. And then everything, like I said, perfectly symmetrical. Okay, so the next problem, let's take a look at 93. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry here, but you might want to look in your textbook. So they give me this crazy word problem about currents and alternating currents and circuit and time. And all we just have to make sure we do with a lot of these word problems is just figure out what everything stands for. So this I here, that's the current. Okay. T stands for time. And they only want time positive. So they want to know, first of all, what's the period, what's the amplitude, and then graph it. Okay. Finding the period, finding the amplitude. We're going to do it the same way we would with regular sine, cosine, tangent. Just these numbers are going to be a little bit crazy. So the period for this one is going to be 2 pi over 60 pi. All right, so when I simplify that, the period is 1 over 30. Okay, so that's pretty crazy. All right, and then the amplitude, just the number out front, 220. Okay, so what that means is when I go to start graphing this, 
we're going to graph it just like our regular sine curve. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to have to deal with fractions. Don't get scared off by them. Here's 1 30th. That's the period. If I cut that in half, now I'm in 60ths. Cut that in half, I'm in 20ths. 120th, excuse me. So I have 1 120th, 2 120ths, 3 120ths. All right, and then simplify all these. That would really just be 1 over 40. All right, and once again with sine. All right, we're going to start at 0, 0. This one isn't shifting or doing anything weird. Here are my three zeros. Amplitude is 220, so that just means I'm going to put a crazy 220, negative 220. All right, and then once again, make everything nice and symmetrical. All right, so now it's up to you to try 95 uh, on your own. Okay, so we did a cup, we did one of each type, I want you to fill in the blanks. All right, so now it's time to talk about some of the other graphs. We've done sine and cosine. Now we're going to talk about tan, cotan, secant, cosecant. All right, so we do have to get the hang of these. All right, let's think about tangent first of all. If we think about the way we did sine and cosine, all right, when we did sine and cosine, we talked about having a unit circle. All right, we took a look at it. We graphed some points. All right, so let's just kind of grab one that makes sense to me. If you do 45 degrees, and for all this graphing, we've got to stick it in radians, pi over 4, 1, 1, root 2. So if I said, what is tangent pi over 4? All right, we should be able to come over here, put a little pi over 4 on there, and you should see pretty quickly that it's 1. Okay? How if I, if I do negative pi over 4? So I'm going to go the other direction. The only thing that's going to change, negative 1. in there. All right. What happens to tan zero? What about tan zero? All right. Think about as tan as being the y value over the x value. So in this case, tan zero would be zero. All right. You can kind of see the tangent graph forming here. Now, I know it's a little blurry, but tan pi over two then. What about this one? It would be zero, one. And if I look at the y over the x, this one ends up being undefined. And whenever you get undefined, that means we have this crazy vertical asymptote. If we do negative pi over 2, same idea. All right, so a little messy here, but this should take kind of a cubic shape, even though it's not a cubic function. It's the tan function. So what's happening, if you look from the left asymptote to the right asymptote, the period is one full pi, right? You're going half a pi to the left, half a pi to the right, one whole pi. The asymptotes are at, let me switch colors here, are at x equals plus minus pi over 2. And that changes, so for now it's just plus minus, and it has one zero. At zero, zero, it crosses the x-axis. Now if we do the same thing with cotangent, all right, I'm going to trust you can do that to go around the circle and figure everything out. What happens with cotangent is you have pi way out here as an asymptote and zero as an asymptote. Then you have this pi over 2 in the middle, pi over 4, all right, so everything's perfectly symmetrical, just like before. All right. Oops. Again, all of these are just coming from the unit circle. Plug in points, see what happens. All right, so cotan is going to go the reverse way, high to low. Now, I forgot to do this on the last question, but the amplitude, this 4, that affects this number here. So. All right, let's do this in red real quick. So originally I had a 1 there. It's going to change it to a 4 and a negative 4. And again, on the previous question, let me move it up here. Let's be exact. So I should change the 1s to 3s. Okay. All right, so that's what that number in front does. It's an amplitude number. All right, so then if I fill in the blanks. Okay, so I'm taking my quiz. Got to fill in the blanks. Here's cotan. It's this yellow graph here. The period is still pi. All right. This time, the asymptotes are at x equals 0 and x equals pi, two vertical lines, and the 0 is at pi over 2. So if you compare the two graphs here, tan and cotan, right next to each other, you can see tan starts low to high, and it's centered about 0, 0. So the asymptotes are perfectly centered. And then if you look at cotan in number 2, it's kind of shifted to the right between 0 and pi, but the period is still pi. The period of both of these is 1 pi versus sine and cosine, the period is 2 pi, so be careful with that, okay? 
All right, so we'll save number three. Maybe we'll do that one in class. So now let's look at secant and cosecant. All right, let's talk about the period and everything later, but just a basic secant graph. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph on here a cosine graph. All right, so we've done a bunch of this, but let's take a look. I'll try to be nice and neat here. Here's what a cosine graph would look like. So this is not secant. This is cosine. Right? And cosine starts up here. All right, I'm just going to start making it nice and symmetrical. All right, now what you have to think about is the fact that secant and cosine are reciprocals of one another. Okay, so if I'm looking at this one, this one says secant, all right? Now, secant means if I do the reciprocal of all my cosine values, I should be able to get my, the secant curve. So let's do an easy one first. If I have a, a cosine value of 1, right here, and then I do this, the reciprocal of it, the reciprocal of 1 is just 1. 1 over 1 is 1, and you flip it, still 1. So that green dot will be a dot on the secant curve, okay? Now, what if I do the reciprocal of a y value of 0? Okay, if I have 0, and then I flip it, I get something over 0. Well, that's undefined. So my secant will be undefined at pi over 2. In other words, it's going to be undefined when cosine equals 0. So at 3 pi over 2, same idea. Okay, if I do the reciprocal of 1, it's still 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. All right, then if I do all the points in between, here's what happens. This little green thing here, this green thing, this is the secant curve. Okay, now what I've graphed over here is y equals secant x. Has amplitude 1, period of 2 pi, haven't changed anything. All right, so what happens then in this actual number 4? What does, this, what does this 2 here do? Well, that changes the amplitude. So if I go back to my graph here, I should be able to change these guys to 2s, get the idea. What does this half do? Well, the half changes the period. So if I do period equals 2 pi over a half, I end up getting a period of 4 pi. All right, so the green curve over here is secant. Let me try to kind of sketch this one in here, see how... Kind of a job I can do here. All right, so if the period is 4 pi, here's 4 pi. Remember, everything is perfectly symmetrical. This one's kind of nice. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. All right, now here's what secant's going to look like. Let me go over maybe in yellow here. Where cosine would have been 0, I'm going to get an asymptote. Asymptote there. Asymptote there. All right, now the period is 2. I'm sorry, the amplitude is 2. I'm going to start like that. And then this yellow curve I'm going to sketch in. Here is 2 secant of a half x. Same idea goes for cosecant. Remember, cosecant and sine are reciprocals. So if I start number 5, all right, so let's kind of talk about the period. Still going to be 2 pi because there's no coefficient in front of the x. The amplitude is 2. So when I start this one, maybe I'll just go ahead and label it instead of having to go back and change it later. And if the period is 2 pi, I'm going to start way out here. All right, now, again, I'm going to start with a sine graph just so you can kind of see the relationship here. So here's my basic sine graph, split it all into nice perfect quarters. Sine starts like this with period or amplitude 2. Here's my sine curve. Now, if I want to change that sine curve into a cosecant curve, everywhere I see a zero, it's going to become an asymptote. Asymptote at 2 pi, asymptote at 1 pi, asymptote at 0. And then if I take all the points and I kind of flip them up because they're reciprocals, this purple thing here is cosecant. So for this question, the period would be 2 pi, all right, and the two asym, or sorry, excuse me, three asymptotes would be 0, pi, and 2 pi.